Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We are still working on this 1973 Williams Jubilee pinball machine. Ugh, this thing needs a lot of work, so we've been carefully going through it. Now, if you haven't been watching our other videos, uh, we did one where all the wires were cut coming out of the cabinet up into the head and uh, fixed all those. Then we did one where we repainted some of the playfield. Got it looking pretty good. Then we did one where we repainted the back glass. Got it looking good. Then we did one where we cleaned everything. Got it looking good, or working clean at least. Uh, and then we did a couple uh, tracking through issues on this machine and doing schematic uh, sleuth work. But there was so much messed up on it that we're still doing that. So. This is our third video, just fixing it. I don't really like doing them where there's two or three videos of the same thing. Like I, I, I like doing it where there's one playfield video, one back box video, one back glass video, one schematic video. But this one's so screwed up that we've had to do several. So it is what it is. So I have my trusty list here. These are our buddies down the road in Gastonia. They bring us by these notepads all the time. They're a printing company. So this is what we are left with. In the previous videos, we were playing this thing, and it pretty much works now, but it's got some issues. So, extra advanced when lit with a question mark. By the way, my chicken scratch there is patented. So I don't want anybody to try to attempt to uh, copy my handwriting, okay? That is mine solely. But that top line says, extra advanced when lit. So, at the top, you can roll through one of the lanes, and then if you roll through the ones lit, it says extra advanced when lit. So whenever we were testing it, my question was, when you go through the advanced, you get one advance of the bonus ladder. But when you go through the extra advance when lit, I was wondering how that works. Like how many are you supposed to get and are we doing are we getting that right? So that's the first thing that we're going to look at, but let's read the other ones here just to make sure. Ball two skipped on the first player. So whenever we played a four player game, when I went to ball two, it looked to me like it skipped the first player. So we need to start another four player game and just see if the balls count up like they should. The, the major issue in the last video was that we permanently have a free ball. So if you, if you uh, scored a f same player shoots again, a free ball, it would never turn off. You just constantly play. And we think we have that fixed, but I put a question mark because it's still questionable. I never found the smoking gun. I did fix it by cleaning it, everything, but I just want to make sure, right? And then the left pop bumper is not working. It hits, but it doesn't score. And then also, it doesn't have the chimes unit in it. So we have to rebuild that chimes unit and talk about that a little bit. So hopefully we'll get to all of that in this video. The last two drug on and on and on. And if you think I talked about it a lot, you should have been here with me trying to figure it out. It took hours and hours. Okay, so the extra advanced when lit, I want to see how that works. So let's start a game. We're on free play. Now remember there's no chimes in it right now. Ball comes up and it goes through this one that says extra advanced when lit, but it's not lit. Oh, you know what? I think that switch was dirty too, wasn't it? Okay, so when it goes through that one, you get one advance. Now when it goes through this lit one, you get four. 11, 15, okay. So you get four when you go through the lit one. So I wanna make sure that that's how that's supposed to be. So let's check it out on the schematics. Okay, so here on the schematics you have the advanced step up coil, which is what we're seeing make it go up one or four. Okay, and so the way it gets powered is through these two lines here. One, it goes through the three advance relay why in the world would they call it that i don't know 
and then one it goes through the advance relay. So if the three advance relay is pulled in, uh, the, the electrical connection goes through here and turns on the advanced step up relay. And then it is pulsed by the impulse cam C, the, Im the impulse cam they call it. Okay. And then it can also be pulsed by the advance relay, which is not the three advance relay. So uh, we'll have to figure out why they call it the three advance relay at some other time, but we'll, we'll get to it here in a minute. So you see what I'm saying? The advanced step up unit either gets power through the three, a uh, switch on the three advance relay, or power through the advance relay. Okay? If it gets it through the Three advance relay. It goes also through this impulse C um, switch. So we'll look at that here in a second. Here is the advance relay and the three advance relay, and you can see that they go through what's called the change relay. So it's either connected to the three advance relay or it switches over and it now it would be connected to the advance relay right and what connects the power to that is the left top rollover switch certainly there will be a um, right top rollover switch as well here somewhere bum, bum, bum. I'm looking for it there it is right top rollover switch so you roll over that switch it connects power it connects power and then it goes through the change relay so right now it would be connected to the advance relay or it would switch over to here and connect to the three advance relay so depending on which one's lit up what which side that change relay is is activating it either does the advance relay or the three advance relay now it calls it the three advance relay I have no clue why. Let's see if it says in the manual if they call it that too. Yeah. The advance relay and the three advance relay. So here's the... Here's what I don't understand. <laughs> the three advance relay, how many times would you say that advances? Three, right? But... The way it does it is it runs through this impulse C switch, right? So if you look on the score motor schematics, the impulse reel, switch C, pulses the advanced step up. That's what we're looking at, right? And look here. There are five cogs on it. <laughs> I don't I don't understand what is going on here. Yeah. What is the problem here? Yeah. It should do it five times, shouldn't it? But why is it called the three advance relay? I don't understand that. Why would they do that? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if there is a switch to change. I wonder if it changes depending if it's on three ball or five ball. It may do it. Hmm. Okay. Advance unit. This unit advances one step when the advance relay is pulsed and three steps when the three advance relay is energized. It resets one step at a time when the bonus relay is energized. So we're getting four, aren't we? Throwing 15,000, 19,000. That's going. Du, 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 du. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's kind of interesting. So I was thinking maybe it's giving us the three and the one, but I don't believe it is. Let's go look. Let's make sure. 
Perhaps it does. Okay, so the advanced relay. If maybe it went and it went, you would get four. So what would make the advanced relay go? If I roll over this right top rollover switch, I'm going to hit that. And that's not going to be connected. Hmm. Gate switch. Oh. Extra score. And advance adjustment. Ah, there is an adjustment. Okay, let's see if in the manual it mentions that. We're looking, we're looking. Extra advance adjustment. This adjustment is in the hold circuit to the three advance relay and determines how many pulses the 100 point relay and advance unit step up coil will receive. Two, three, or four. Located on play field. You can set it on two, three, or four. Well, now you know. They got it set on four. All right. Well, we solved that issue. Let's, let's mark it off the list, folks. We figured it out. I'm better than I thought I was. So I already had that fixed. All right. Ball two was skipped on the first player in a four-player game. So let's uh, restart it. Nope. Oh, okay, we're still good. Two. Three lights not working. And our four lights not working. I'm finding more stuff that's broke. We already fixed the four player light before. What's up with that? This thing. Ugh. Maybe it's because I didn't win the game or something. I don't know. How are we on ball one, but we had points? Oh, I must have been hitting stuff on the play field. Oh, yeah, I was hitting the advance. Player two. Player three. That left pop bumper is dead. Mm, hate it. it. Sucks when you don't get any points. Player four, ball one. So here's where it skipped. So going to the next one, it should go to player one, ball one, ball two. It did it again. What in the hell? Let's see if it does it every time. So it's a ball two on player two. Ball two, player three. Ball two, player four. So it would do it again here, possibly. Some good action on that one pop bumper, for sure. <laughs> it skips player one. What? Say what? This is ball three, so I guess it will just end the game after it gets to player four. It's crazy how it consistently skips player one. All right, and this should end the game because we're on three balls. Okay. All right, so I, just to, I'm gonna do a two player game. Oh look, still on two players. hit start again and it gave me it went to one player. Now I'm on two players. Hmm. 
Something weird there, people. Something weird going on there. Something very strange. All right. It's a ball. So let's see if it goes back to the first player after this. I'm trying to decide if it's only on like a four player game or something. Huh, it works fine. Just not when it's on a four player. What in the world is that all about? Let me try something else. Uh, whenever I hit start right now, I sh it should reset everything. All right? So I'm putting a co I'm, I'm starting a game in the middle of the uh, in the somebody's calling me. I'm starting a game in the middle of a game. Yeah, it resets everything. Okay. Hmm. Something going on there. Let me uh, let me see if we can track that down. Okay, folks, so in the back box, this is the player unit. We are on player two right now. So the way it works is this one, there's a reset coil and a step-up coil. All right, so there are four positions. Three, four, so that's the fourth player. And then this reset coil comes in, and watch, it's gonna go back four positions. All right, so that's player one, player two, player three, Player four, I'm doing it too slow. <laughs> Player four, right? When you reset it, it goes back four positions. All right, so we worked on all that before. So let me show you what happens though whenever the game does it. Two, three, four, we're on player four. And there are, you know, different little connections all over the place. But you see how it resets just fine, right? So this is, if you watch one of those pins, it's on the fourth position, and they're, they're all the way around, right? So I'm going to plunge the ball and let it play itself. We're on player four. And you can watch it when it resets. Watch here. Fourth position. It only reset to the second position. It didn't reset all the way back. The reason it's working on two-player is because it's a timing thing. So this has to pull in to get it to reset back. So right now it's on two player. If this was a two player game and it's pulled in, it would go back to one player. But since it has four positions it has to reset, the coil doesn't hold in long enough for it to get all the way back to zero, I mean to one, for it to go back three spots because it's trying to do it really fast. So we'll look in the schematics and see uh, what pulls that coil in and see if we can adjust the timing a little bit to give it a little more time. So this is that reset coil we were talking about, the player unit reset coil. See it doesn't say relay or anything. So that's the player unit reset coil that we were just messing with. All right? And so what powers it as you come down through here? And it depends on the position of the player reset relay. So if this is energized, then this connects over here, and it makes it reset. But as soon as this relay would de-energize, this would swap back over to here, which will allow power to go to the player unit step up coil, right? Which is the other one that we were messing with. And uh, we haven't had any problems with the step up coil. So, and so then it's also, it runs through this switch on the motor, the ball index relay, one of our favorite coils on this, it gave us so much trouble on the last one, uh, a normally closed switch on the extra ball relay, which would never even come into play unless you get an extra ball, um, and then uh, the out hole relay, which should hold in fine. So my, th my thinking is, I think that this switch is probably not adjusted quite right. I'm going to make it where it holds this way a little bit longer whenever it pulls in just by just literally bending the switches a little closer together and see if that little timing uh, gets it. And if it doesn't, it may be this switch on the motor. I'll have to find it. On the cam, it may be coming apart too too early or, or whatever. But it's it's not holding it. Basically, these, uh, either this switch or this switch 
or this switch or this switch isn't holding together quite long enough. It needs just a little bit longer and it would it would let that coil pulse just a little bit longer where it could reset three steps instead of just two steps. That particular uh, type of stepper unit has a, a situation where um, it catches the wheel at where, whatever place it's at whenever it uh, stops resetting. Some, some of them you just hit reset and it'll just free wheel all the way back to the beginning. That one it does, but as soon as that coil lets go, it stops it right there. Uh, so it's just a timing issue. So I'm gonna check out those switches and then we'll see if we can get it to reset properly. All right, I look, the timing on everything is actually fine and there's, you know, it wasn't, I adjusted everything a little closer, but it didn't change anything. But then I noticed something's missing, actually. <laughs> There's a spring that goes right here. So this little thing, remember how I was just saying that whenever it resets, it catches it? So apparently it's not supposed to do that. So this little piece is in here that raises up a little bar, right, on a spring. And when this pulls in, that little bar should pull up to where it can no longer go in the... Um, so that it does free wheel back to the beginning, which will allow it to go all the way back, right? And then, then, as soon as this one pulls in, it's going to allow those to re-engage with, uh, with the gear, right? So I need a spring. I'm missing a spring that goes from here to this little tiny, This little tiny rivet that they've got in there, I guess. Goes from there to there. So let me find a little spring and we'll fix that. This is the Pinball Resources website. So they sell spring kits for a lot of things. Uh, they sell this little kit here that replaces the four most commonly used spring on a Williams 50 step resetting step units. Springs shown below are actual size. Match springs that are legend below and replace accordingly. So they make a little kit where they sell the four springs, but guess what? The one I'm missing is this fifth one. <laughs> but you can kind of see what we were just looking at. But uh, I can find one of those. Let me go find one in the back and I'll pop it on there and then we'll try it again. The spring has been applied. I believe that's going to fix it. We still got to look at the light thing. Okay, so uh, we're on one player, but I think we can cheat. I think if I do this, two, three, four. I think we're on four player now. Yes. So we're on four player. Let's see if it resets us back to the first player this now, finally. How sweet it is. All right, so we had a spring missing. I can't believe I even figured that out. We're gonna let it do it one more time just to make sure everything's copacetic. Two player, I mean second player. Third player. Fourth player, here's the one. All right, we fixed that. We fixed it. Yay! There's a freaking spring was missing. Mm. Okay, permanently have a free ball. Ugh. I'm getting nervous even thinking about it. All right, let's test it. Let's see if it's gonna work. Have a free ball. We're on player one, ball three. We lose the ball. Will it turn off the free ball? Will it do it? It did. Now, it didn't do it when it hit the 100 because that's, I don't know if I even showed it in the last video, but they've got a wire in the wrong spot in the back that somebody moved. But I'll move that back here shortly. 
Okay, so next up, uh, I believe I have that free play thing, I mean a free ball thing fixed. Next is the left pop bumper, and then these also these three can play and four can play lights. Um, that'll be easy. We'll look at that when we look at the left pop bumper. Okay, so this is the left pop bumper. Now, I got that light over there so you can see it a little better. When I press the skirt that the ball rolls up, up on the play field, see how it makes that top switch connect? Well, that switch is working because the pop bumper is pulling in, but we're not scoring the point. Well, the way it worked on these old, old, old ones like this is that there is a switch right here that is open. And this little piece on the pop bumper holds it open. So when, the, when it comes down, that switch connects. That's how you score your point. And then it lets go of it again. Right? And if you look real close, that switch is not touching. So it just needs to be bent a little bit, and that'll fix the pop bumper. No problem. So this coin step-up disc is down in the bottom, and it is what makes the one can play, two can play, three can play, four can play lights work. So right at the top of it is a long middle finger. And I suppose it's grounded to the frame, it says. Uh, and so it goes, depending on how many coins have been put in, it lights up different lights. So I'm going to guess that that, that finger is not making good contact or bent a little bit or something like that so I'm going to finagle it a little bit and see if that gets our uh, our start our can play lights to work right okay another thing I've been meaning to tell you folks uh, whenever you're moving the play field around uh, you can you can slide it out a little bit and lean it up and all that but whenever you do there is a pigtail at the at the end where the Jones plugs plug in and it's kind of like a snake. Uh, the thing kind of coils around, right? So whenever you go to put the play field back, it's real important that you look at where that is. So if you see, I, was, I just had this lifted out and everything. And then uh, when I'm about to put it back, you can see that that coil is actually laying on one of the stepper units. Right? So I need to move that out of the way. There is a little clip in the back on that back wall that you're supposed to clip it into to keep it out of the way so that it doesn't interfere with the operation of the stepper units. On some games, it'll, it'll lay over these uh, relays in the back here and cause you all kinds of problems. So if you, if you do have something weird going on, just check that while you're at it. That wasn't the problem here, though. <laughs> so the, uh, that one finger over there was all bent up and everything. It was still making contact, but just barely. So I retensioned it, bent it a little bit more to where it's pushing against the board a little better. And uh, we'll see what's going on. I think the third bulb, though, maybe burn out. The three can play, but we'll mess with that here in a second and see. Okay, so our one can play light is on. It still says ball three because we ended the game and we turned it off in the middle of the third ball. So let's reset it. Kick the ball out, it says one can play, two can play, three is not working. Let me look and see if that's the bulb, but maybe the bulb is burnt out. It was the bulb. Cool. I've replaced all the bulbs, but some of them I didn't because they look brand new. Yeah. I should have done it anyway. Somebody else had already worked through it, so I should have replaced them anyway. Okay, so number three number four so all of those are working now my bad bulb left pop bumper we fixed the three player light and the four player light so the best of my knowledge everything on it is working but there is one little adjustment I want to make so we're gonna go back to the manual real quick 
So down uh, by the flippers, there are these ball eject cam units, right? And it actually says in here, um, two bottom shooters propel playfield ball towards enclosed balls and help in setting five balls to lit side. Five enclosed balls can be looped towards lit side by playing playfield ball into lit shooter or by skillfully playing ball off the flippers towards desired side. So you see what that's saying? It, they can be looped towards the lit side by dropping the ball in the lit shooter. So the lit shooter should hit the ball that knocks it to the lit side. Okay, so then here in another part of the manual, it says, To change direction of ball when ejected, grasp the ball eject cam <laughs> with long-nosed pliers, approximately a quarter inch, and bend slightly. Bending to the left will change direction of ejected ball slightly to the right, and vice versa. So they are literally telling you, look at this drawing. Now somebody said, Bob, don't worry about it. I'll make sure to put a diagram in the manual. They'll know how to do it. Bob, it's no problem. We'll just draw in some needle nose pliers. They'll figure it out. Bob, it, it's about the top quarter inch. It's no problem. I'll draw it in. No big deal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> they literally want you to bend the top of the hook left and right to make it shoot right. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So it said if the ball goes in the lit one, it should knock the balls towards the lit side. So it should cross over. So this one should hit that one, and this one should hit that one, right? So we're going to test that theory. Now, if there's a bunch of play in this thing, it may not work. I don't know. Seems pretty good. So we should hit the left side. Well, what do you know? Let's try it again. Well, what do you know? I didn't miss that time. Okay, let's try it again. Uh-huh. It wasn't quite strong enough that one time, but if you don't know about us, we like jacking the legs up on the back of the EMs to make them play faster. But it makes some of the things not work quite as intended, right? So the one time it didn't hit it hard enough to knock it all the way over, but it got there. Okay, so this side should hit the... that side. If it misses every once in a while, I don't know if I can fix that. You know what I mean? So it went to the right. I think I'm going to leave it. I mean, it, most of the time it's doing it. And every once in a while it misses, misses it. I don't know that I can fix that. So... I was going to adjust it, but at least we talked about it, right? So you know what's next? It's chimes time. Okay, folks, now, you may remember from way back, we were working on some other game. I can't remember which one that was, but something, and it didn't have a chime unit, and so I stole it out of the Jubilee which was in much worse shape back then. Let me see if I can find that tape. So I need a chime unit. Where could I find a chime unit to put in this? So it's a Williams. And it's a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. He did like well over 100 games. So it's a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass. Where can I get another... 
Oh hell, this is a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. I wonder if there's a, Let's see, where could I find a, where could I find a China unit? This one ain't got one. That ain't gonna work. Damn, I thought I had it. Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. Williams. Oh, wait a minute. This is a Williams that Christian Marsh did the back glass on. It's locked. <laughs> so I ended up stealing the chime unit out of the Jubilee, but now we're working on the Jubilee, so I needed to buy a chime unit. So I got a chime unit. This one actually looks like it's in better shape than the one that was in there, so I don't want to hear any crap, people. Okay, so it's probably going to sound pretty bad right now. That was alright, I guess. It ain't right. I think I can just whack it with something. Let me find something to whack it with. I've been trying to clean up lately. I ain't got much laying around here. It don't sound very good. The reason it doesn't sound good is if you look closely, the bars see how they can hit that metal bar under them. This can hit this. Or the plastic. It just ain't right. So I'll show you how to fix one if you if you run into an old one like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go get those needle nose pliers that Larry was talking about in uh, in engineering. So you bend this little pin a little bit and pull it out, and then you take this little top plate off and pull it out. And then underneath that are two washers. These are actually like nylon. So the purpose of these is to isolate the bar from this piece of metal here. Because when they slap together is when they sound like crap. Right? And then you got your actual chime. Right? And you can see where the flat piece went on the top. And then on the bottom you can see some residue from the little rubber ring that was originally there. And then also on that little metal plate there, there is a piece of like, it's like a little piece of piping. You just need something on there so that this metal can't touch this metal or this metal. Okay. So you could even do it with electrical tape. You just need something around this metal shaft. See, this is like a little piece of plastic. Like plastic tubing. But electrical tape would do it too. You just need something to help isolate it from that. Um, so uh, you also need something under the metal so that it can't hit this. So I'm going to use like a pinball ring. I think I've got some smaller ones here. And I'm just going to put it down over the shaft so that it can't touch the bottom. We'll clean it up a little bit and put it back on. I'll do just the one so you can see the difference. Okay, so I cleaned it up a little bit. I put a ring in there so that it isolates it from the plate. Make it similar to the, uh, to the uh, uh, rubber that was in there before. So I can get that one down a little bit. harder to do things with one hand. 
basically you don't want it to hold it too tight. You want it to be able to move. That is a little tight. Um, but you don't want it slapping. You don't want it slappy, right? So, slappy, slappy. See how it reverberates? Now one thing you'll run into if you if you put too much under here and you lift it too high it actually makes it a little quieter because the this uh, plunger whoa, will only travel so far right okay so I'm going to clean up the other two take them apart do the same thing and then we'll see how it sounds whenever we get all three of them doing their thing <laughs> Look at that, right back where it was. All is good in the world. So this loops around underneath and plugs in over here I got to bend it but it plugs in right there so that it can be removed and I'll tighten those screws up then we got to play it and see if all the chimes work okay we're getting down to the dredges how do I get a thousand I get a thousand. I guess I get a bunch of hundreds. Here we go. It was in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's not as easy to hear that. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. So uh, I don't think there's any way. I guess you. You're. Oh yeah, you'll learn it. We'll hear the thousands whenever it's draining and counting the, uh, the bonus. People, I think we're about done. The flippers seem nice and strong. And we got our pop bumper working. We got our chimes working. We got it resetting where it'll play. Uh, it'll go back to player one after player four. Uh, what else did we work on this time? We got our little light bulbs down there working. I think it's about time to put a price tag on this one. So we got just a couple other things to do. We got to clean it up a little bit more. Um, put the lockdown bar back on it, put some glass on it, all of that. We got to put a back door on it, put some locks on it, put on the locks, um, and then it'll be ready to go. So we will, uh, we've actually got a customer lined up for this one, we believe. Um, or maybe a couple actually. So it probably won't be here long. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to film one more video of us actually playing it. What do you think about that? Because uh, it seems like a pretty cool game. And I may, I'm still thinking, I might adjust that one. Because it's going a little bit to the right, it seems like. So if I adjust it just slightly back to the left, it might be better. <laughs> like, uh, was it Picasso that said, or was it Da Vinci? It was one of them guys that could really paint said uh, a masterpiece is never finished only abandoned so eventually we're going to abandon this sucker and let me tell you it'll probably be tomorrow but uh we'll, we'll film one more video of us playing it and everything so if you've enjoyed it so far that will be the finale by the way the videos of us playing them never get anywhere near as many uh as many views people don't like them as much but i like to film them because uh, i need i still need to test it and stuff and 
just play a few games through it and just make sure everything works right like we think it will. So look for that next. So we'd like to thank everybody for hanging out with us. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And leave your comments below. And if you've uh, been using our Amazon links, we really appreciate that. So if you don't know about that, there is a link down below to Amazon in different countries and things. Too, if you're not in the United States, we may have an Amazon link for you if you go look. And if you bookmark that link or use it whenever you uh, go buy things from Amazon, it gives us a little tip because we sent you there like I'm doing right now. right? And then also, check out our brother channel. My Brother Donnie is the name of the channel. And it's my real brother. It's actually him in the flesh. So he and I, on the weekends, sometimes uh, are working on this old, little tiny, very small and inexpensive uh, little grocery store that we're working on. We bought a grocery store from 1962. Again, it's very small. It's in a little old town. We bought the building. It was run down a little bit, and we're fixing it up. We put a new roof on it. We're painting it. and repairing some of the cinder block and doing some of the electrical and the plumbing needs work and oh lord even the door hinge is screwed up got all this little stuff that we're working on on it uh, getting it ready to rent to somebody so we're trying to save an old building like we save these old pinball machines so if you like some stuff like that go check it out the channel's my brother Donnie he's a little crazier than I am though so I have to warn you ahead of time but he does a lot of other videos on there too like a lot of farming stuff if you're into that he does a lot of small engine repair and uh, always has something special on his channel. So go check that out, my brother Donnie, and I'll see you over there. But come back tomorrow. We'll have one more video of this Jubilee, which will be us playing. So we'll see you then. We'll go over the rule sets and all the artwork. And uh, I've got a, a special back glass from a few years ago that I want to show you. <laughs> or I believe I have a picture of it that I want to show you of another one of these that we got in. It's interesting. Uh, so check back with us then. Leave your comments below. Give us an odd number of thumbs up. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Have a good evening.